So, still dive, Captain Willard Hamash has been gaining popularity due to its iconic looks and ever declining price tag. San Martin, on the other hand, stubbornly kept the price fixed above $200 mark. However, this has changed recently, well, at least during AliExpress crazy sale events, which might just make it a potential alternative to the super popular Steel Dive. So, does Steel Dive have what it takes to come up on top of this friendly or maybe not so friendly encounter? Well, we have both of them here. Let's find out. Hello and welcome back! This head-to-head -head comparison is long overdue and we have a few key points to unpack here. From materials perspective, both of these watches are very similar. Or are they? Are we getting the same functionality? What about build quality and the finishing? And of course, comparing the prices and more importantly, what value these watches bring to the table, so to speak. We will need to identify if San Martin is a viable alternative to ever so popular steel dive and vice versa. I will keep a scorecard so we can have something to help us to come up with a sensitive conclusion. And no matter the winner, there will definitely be all the necessary links in the description of this video for you to check out these cool time pieces for yourself. And also, I did a detailed review of both of these watches, so for more in-depth examination, I recommend checking those videos. Links will be in the description too. Price. This category is pretty simple. Steel Dive is on average three times cheaper when priced normally or about half a price during AliExpress sales when some attend discuss their watches sometimes quite aggressively. So, this round, I think, hands down, goes to Steel Dive. So, as I do in this type of comparison, for the sake of saving time, let's get the similarities out of the way first. So, in terms of materials, we've got sapphire crystal, 316L stainless steel, ceramic bezels on both watches, and both watches are powered by Seiko NH35 movement. In terms of dimensions, well, the dimensions are surprisingly close too. We have bezel diameter of about 41 mm, we've got case width of 44 mm, case height is slightly different at 13.9 mm for San Martin and 13.6 mm for Steel Dive. Light width is exactly the same at 20 mm and lock tip to lock tip is 47 mm for both watches. However, San Martin has effective distance of 51 mm on the bracelet, and that's of course because of the protruding end links, and we will have a look at it when we examine the bracelet in more detail. Details. We also have a slightly different bracelet taper at 16mm for San Martin and 18mm for Steel Dive, and that kind of explains the 10 gram difference after the bracelets adjusted to my about 7 inch wrist. So, as we can see, the dimensions are very similar, with the most significant relative difference being the height of the cases. And even that is quite easy to explain, because San Martin has a double dome sapphire crystal, while Steel Dive has a flat one. Hence, Samatan is a fraction of a millimeter taller. So, based on the dimensions, well, I think it's a tick for both watches. Okay, with similarities out of the way, let's focus on what is actually different, starting with the cases. The cases are actually very, very similar, and not only in terms of dimensions and proportions, but in terms of finishing too. As much as I'm used to seeing impeccable finishing from San Martin, I can't fault Steel Dive here either. Okay, at a very close inspection, San Martin's brushing is ever so slightly more consistent, but we really need a micro lens to observe it. As a matter of fact, if someone told me that these two cases came from the same production line, I wouldn't be much surprised. The back of the cases of both watches are decorated, Steel Life has their logo laser aged, and San Martin has an embossed image of the shark, which is definitely my favorite. Now, where I see the largest differences is the crown proportions. The diameters 6.2 mm for Steel Dive and 6.8 mm for San Martin, and the length of the crowns. The Steel Dive crown is nicely tucked away, very much like the Seiko's own Captain Willard watch, while San Martin has a more prominent crown, which sticks out about 1.5 mm. The different crown proportions make no difference the way the watches wear, and San Martin's version, which is a bit bigger and has an interestingly sculpted grip, which I prefer, is actually somewhat easier to operate. Ok, clearly my personal preference here is with San Martin, but I will not let my personal preferences cloud my judgment, so both cases get a tick here. 
crystals. Okay, both watches come with sapphire crystals. Both crystals feature anti-reflective coating. However, while San Martin has a clear anti-reflective coating, the coating on Steel Dive has a slight blue hue, which isn't everyone's cup of tea. Well, I definitely prefer San Martin's clear coating here. Also, San Martin has a nice double dome sapphire crystal, and it looks really good. The thing is that Steel Dive crystal is also good. However, San Martin's is just noticeably better. So, this round goes to San Martin. Okay, bezel. San Martin is known to deliver one of the best bezels on AliExpress and outside AliExpress too. So, how is Steel Dive compared here? Well, surprisingly, really good. The bezel action on the Steel Dive is really solid, resistance is good, and there is pretty much no backplate to speak of. Okay, I think it is worthwhile to mention that San Martin's bezel is not a slouch either. The bezel action on San Martin is excellent. It also has a slight angle on the grip, which increases the effective grip area without a need to make a bezel taller. A very clever design decision, in my opinion. And here is how both of these bezels sound. Now, both bezels have ceramic inserts. San Martin insert is installed nice and flush to the bezel metal surroundings, while Steel Dive is ever so slightly sticking out. Not a big deal, but does show attention to detail. One area where Steel Dive does give San Martin run for the money is bezel loom. From the initial release, Steel Dive had a fully loomed bezel, and it wasn't just a gimmick. The luminosity is pretty strong. San Martin, on the other hand, was selling this watch with 12 o'clock triangle only, and just recently introduced a fully loomed bezel option, which is cool, but it also adds about 10 bucks to the price, which of course isn't as cool. So, personally, after a lot of deliberation with the supreme members of the jury, uh, that is myself, I decided it is a draw. Dials. Okay. Both brands went, of course, with the very similar dials. Steel Dive decided to have a minute chapter ring printed on the dial, while San Martin installed the minute track angled to the rehaut, which created a bit more space on the dial compared to Steel Dive version. Both dials have very good quality control, so no complaints here. However, San Martin did an excellent job with a nice blue background, which matches very well with the color of the bezel, and the finishing on the hands and applied hour markers is really good. Plus, we have an applied logo here, adding a premium touch to this already very good dial. Now, the Steel Dive dial is pretty good if we examine it in isolation. However, next to San Martin, it is definitely looking looks a bit more subdued. Here is the interesting thing. When I put Steel Dive on a black tropical strap, it really brings out this dial, giving the Steel Dive nice vintage look and actually transforming this watch. With San Martin the tropical strap, for some reason, while still nice, doesn't change the watch as much as it does on Steel Dive. And in my humble opinion, San Martin actually looks much better on this stainless steel bracelet. And to make a final decision on the dial, we need to run a loom side by side. Okay, don't get me wrong, Steel Dive has a very good and effective loom, but San Martin is just on another level here. So, this round definitely goes to San Martin. Bracelet. Before we finally get to compare the overall value, we need to examine the bracelets. So, first and foremost, it looks like both brands actually did a better job when it comes to case bracelet integration than Seiko's own $1200 reissue. So, we are off to a good start here. Both bracelets have solid end links and solid links. Steel Dive even took it a step further and went with integrated end links. Well, it was a good idea, however, the execution wasn't as refined. We still get a decent bracelet that will fit more three sizes, because it doesn't add to luck to luck distance of this watch. Now, looking at San Martin, the bracelet is definitely much more refined. It has a slightly more taper, down to 16mm compared to 18mm on Steel Dive, and hence it is, as I mentioned earlier, about 10 grams lighter. The finishing is noticeably better too, the links are connected by screws, not pins like on Steel Dive bracelet, and San Martin's branded fully milled double pusher clasp is also on another level. I know that if you buy Steel Dive now, you will get a signed clasp with milled inner mechanism, which of course is better than the clasp on my earlier version of this watch, but still, it is not enough 
to match a San Martin's clasp in my opinion. And in regards to San Martin's protruding end links, which result in almost 51mm of effective lock to lock distance, well, the end links are so aggressively pointing down that these extra few millimeters make very little difference in the way it sits on the wrist. And by the way, Seiko's own bracelet has very similar dimensions on its protruding end links. So, the bracelet round does go to San Martin. Brands. Well, possibly a year ago I would have easily given this round to San Martin. However, things have changed. For starters, San Martin just keeps on developing and building a strong reputation as a very impressive brand, which is now quite successfully branching into original design territory. However, Steel Dive wasn't sitting on their hands in the last couple of years either. And while they don't have as many original designs in their portfolio, their product spectrum is big and the build quality is solid, which combined with very sharp prices made Steel Dive a very, very popular brand. So, I know, I might draw a lot of heat from fans of both of these brands, but in my humble opinion, it is a draw. Now, comparing the value, well, this is probably will be the most controversial round. With stronger loom, better anti-reflective coating and more refined dial elements and bracelet, Das San Martin represents a better value, with the price tag being three times higher than Steel Dive. Well, personally, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, Steel Dive, which can be purchased during AliExpress sales for as low as 65 bucks, represents an amazing value for money, and it is not a surprise that it is so popular. So much so that I'm going to give it two ticks here. So we kinda came to a draw here. However, my personal opinion is that if you want a refined all-rounder and don't mind paying between 170 and 210 dollars for it, then San Martin would be my preference. However, if you're after a robust watch that looks great on a bracelet and even better on a tropic rubber strap, and you only have a budget of around 70 bucks, then Steel Dive is definitely a perfect candidate. What are your thoughts? Well, do let us know in the comments. And if you want to see Steel Dive taking on Almighty Seiko, well, check my playlist over here. And for other great value watches, I will put a link on the screen over here. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you for watching, take care, and I will see you in the next video.